Hey guys, so it has been quite the week. I, at least from the intentions, if you watched the last video that I had, I had intended on recording another video that night to put out for you guys the next day. And then kids don't go to sleep. And Dan was on second shift and he uh, would come home and game instead of going to bed. So being unable to edit and do voiceovers right now, my window of time to record for you guys is at night when everybody's sleeping. The problem was nobody was sleeping this week. And originally I had a whole setup for this video of a whole bunch of alcohol ink things. And because I didn't get that video up, of course this always happens to me, I start seeing a video pop up here about alcohol ink cards and backgrounds. And another one pops up on this channel that I follow, and then another one, and I was like, ugh. So, I was going to drop the video, and I was like, you know what, no, I'm not doing that to myself anymore. I planned a video, I'm going to do it, you know. It's not my fault that somebody else beat me to it because I was unable to record. So I'm still going to do it. I did change it up a little bit. So I don't know if... Any of you follow Mary Polanco, if you don't, you should. She recently did a comparison with Yupo paper and poster board from the Dollar Tree. So of course I have to go out and try this. And I picked up the poster board. Now I personally, I mean, I have a piece of Yupo here and a piece of poster board here because there's a nut, something else I wanna try and I don't know if it'll work on both. And you'll be able to see the slight differences. It definitely dries faster on the poster board. I'll show you some of the examples while I talk that I made this week while I was waiting to film. So this one is just regular alcohol inks with some foiling done on it. And that's on poster board. If you, I don't know, let's see if you can guys can start to see a pattern. This one is Yupo, and this was playing with regular alcohol inks again, the bottle green denim and terracotta, because I had never used them before. They were brand new with some foiling, and that's Yupo. This one is with the Celestial Mineral and Smolder Pearl Inks. It's poster board. This is the same three colors, the pearl inks on Yupo. I can't remember what colors these are, but there are no pearls in them. And this is Yupo. And then this one looks different, but they are the same colors. This one just had more blue. I think it's denim bottle green and uh, dandelion yellow is what I decided to go with. This one is on the poster board. Now on this one, then you can start to see the slight differences between the poster board and the Yupo. So as a matter of fact, let's, here's one more that's on Yupo, but I don't have it on poster board because I used it on a card which there are two parts to this video and you guys will see that in the second part. Uh, I did do a different technique with this one. That's why it looks a little different. But on that side, I did do one on glossy cardstock also, which we'll talk about in a second. So this one's a perfect example. If you can tell, I took a little too long dropping the alcohol ink on, putting the blending solution on. So even though the poster board has a waxy surface on the top, if you do wait too long, it's going to soak in. And then you, you know, you'll have to add more alcohol ink because you know, you didn't have time to spread it around and do what you wanted with it. But I have to say out of all the examples that I tried and some of them I've already used on cards, this is definitely a very inexpensive way to alcohol ink until your, your heart's desired for backgrounds. 
I mean, aside from that soaking up quick or drying quick, which is easily remedied. I mean, out of all the times I tried, never once did I oversaturate, oversaturate a paper. So the poster board didn't get oversaturated. This is from it leaking under the tape I had. But as you can see, the center, the center's fine on all of them. I could have probably done a, a, you know, like I do on the Yupo, use both sides, but the back doesn't have the waxy surface. <clears throat> so that's the only difference that I saw when I was playing around with it, is that it dries quicker, but like I said, I never once oversaturated my paper, so as long as you don't mind using more alcohol ink, there's really not an issue. And when you're getting, I think my pack had four sheets in it, and you can cut them down to four, five, by, five and a half by seven pieces. So you're getting 20 sheets of paper to use for alcohol ink backgrounds in a package for a buck. I don't even know what the math on that is. What's 20? A dollar divided by 20, I'm horrible at math, five cents a sheet, maybe. And Yupo is what? But depending on where you go, anywhere from 10 to $13 for a 10 pack of five by seven. So that is my take on it. If you, and Mary did a, a very cool review on the poster board in the Yupo. If you want to head over to Mary Polanco's channel and check out her her find, she's the one that found and thought of using this poster board for alcohol inks. Now, to move on to the glossy cardstock, I even like the pa the poster board better than the glossy cardstock. The glossy cardstock seems to soak it in much quicker than the poster board even did. I did use up the rest of my glossy cardstock to, to saturate with a single color so I could use it to cut out dyes to do inlays into the alcohol cards, alcohol background cards. And I did add glitter to some of them with the glitter duster. Other than that, I don't think I'll, now that I've used all the glossy cardstock, I'll probably never buy it again. <clears throat> Whether or not we still need to buy a Yupo remains to be shown, which we're gonna do in this video. So here's just a couple more backgrounds I did. I'll show you real quick before we move on to what we're doing. Let's move all these out of the way. I thought this one turned out super pretty. And it's pink sherbet, sherbet, flamingo, a little bit of mineral, and some smolder. This one has poppy seed, Uh, honeycomb and Valencia and this one is the three pack that came together honeycomb botanical and poppy seed with some foil on it I just was messing around like I said waiting to see if Dan was gonna go to sleep so I could record and every day this week I was disappointed except for last night and tonight okay you're gonna see some really cool cards in part two though and I plan on doing a couple more videos showing you guys the rest of the cards I made with all the stuff I cut out and all the backgrounds that I did end up using. So my curiosity comes into alcohol lift ink. Will the alcohol lift ink work on the poster board? It's now seeing as how if you don't work fast enough, your alcohol ink may soak in and dry up and you have to add more. I'm wondering if that affects the way an alcohol lift ink works. So we're just gonna do the same colors on the background for each of these, and I'm gonna take this sweater off so I don't ruin it. Now again, this one is the Yupo. This one is the poster board. Let's take my sweater off. And I figure we'll just stick with a few, few pretty colors, pretty Easter girly colors. Let's see here. I think that's it. There's I talk about a lot of stuff that's going on in my life in the next video. Oh, I got my hair cut today, guys. I uh, wanted a change and my friend was coming over to, to color and highlight my hair anyway. And I was like, you know what, I really want a haircut. I don't want to have to get up and do my hair. I don't want to have to get up and pull it back because it's in my way. And lately I've been getting a real wicked headache every time I pull my hair back. 
but I can't leave it in my face. It, you know, it hangs in my face, it gets in my way. So I'm just gonna do one at a time so that the ink doesn't dry out on the poster board while I'm working on this one. And I didn't want to mess around with any pearl inks because I know sometimes you can get an alcohol lift ink to work on, well, with mixatives, if there isn't a lot. But I know that when I was watching Tim Holtz's video on the alcohol pearl inks, he said the lift ink would not work on those. So I don't wanna mess up our discovery and our experiment by adding a pearl ink into our mix. So Mary had a very interesting way of doing her, her alcohol ink backgrounds. I was using this thing, the distress marker air thing. And on this other one, I'll try Mary's way, which I thought was pretty cool. And I got a lot of cool backgrounds with the way she did it. Never thought to do it like that. I thought this worked well enough. And if it wasn't going where I wanted it to, I would just blow on it. I love, I did this on purpose. I probably could have gotten away with not even putting the wild plum in because I love the way the blues and the pinks mix together to make the purples. You just get some really pretty colored tones of purple, shades of purple. And I have to say, you guys, with all this messing around that I've done this week with alcohol inks and the different papers and the pearl inks, I, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better with the having no control issue with the alcohol inks. You guys know that I, I get very frustrated by this technique because I have no control over what happens. And I like to have control, but I've found ways to kind of get that control without fully, you know, really having it. I think I'm just tricking myself, honestly. And I'm feeling better about the whole thing. Do you ever touch a project and think, crap, I should have left it alone. It looked better the first time because that's how I'm feeling right now. And this is where that control comes in. I feel stupid because here I am controlling what little I can and I screwed up. As far as I think, I screwed up my picture. But it doesn't matter for the purpose of our experiment. So I just want to make sure it's moved around some. I don't have any especially dark areas. I'm also not going to put any foil on these because I don't want it to interfere with our experiment. When I can no longer blow it with air, then I usually leave it alone, set it off to dry. So let's work on this one. All right, I don't know what color I started with, but we're gonna try to work fast because this is the poster board. Uh, and I was sick this week, so I haven't been able to go see my mom at all. I have finished my course of antibiotic. I've finished my prednisone, but my mom is a very cautious person when it comes to maybe being exposed to getting sick. And she was like, stay away until you you know you're better. So I did go to Walmart for her though. She is finally starting to gain some weight. All the pants she originally took with her to the hospital when she first went in the last or the first week in February were all way too big with her for her because she lost so much weight. Now this is Mary's technique, kind of like an acrylic pour, she called it, which I do want to try by the way. And hers were turning out so cool. I did get some cool backgrounds. So that's how we're gonna do this one while I talk. So yeah, she was in the hospital for a long time and after she had the emergency surgery, she was on a no food, nothing by mouth NPO diet. So I think right now she weighs 83 or did she say she, at one point she was down to 77 pounds. But she's gaining weight now. I did, we were texting this week. I picked up new pajama pants for her, <clears throat> brought them to my dad so he could wash them and bring them up to her. 
And she's doing her physical therapy, I think, every other day. So mama is definitely getting better. Now, doesn't that look cool? And I almost picked this up, but honestly, that whole paint pouring thing, Mary's got something there. It really does look like a paint pour. And it's still moving a little. Sorry if I'm in the camera, guys. Just want to get it dried so we can experiment. I wanted to do one ahead of time and have one done. But I wanted you guys to see the difference between the poster board and the UPO. Plus, I didn't want to do one ahead of time and then go, hey, wait, was that poster board or was that UPO? I can't remember. Because, you know, I would do something like that. So let's wrap these up and put them away. Uh, lots of good stuff to tell you in the next video. And there is a giveaway tonight or this morning. You guys aren't going to see this until Saturday morning. Uh, very excited. You guys will find out about that. I guess you'll have to watch this whole video and find out if it's in this video or the next half. I'm down officially. I was looking at my phone to 400 photos. 422 photos left to print and then I will have enough memory when I transfer videos to my iPad to edit to edit without it saying my storage is full and you guys all know that I'm sure I sound like a broken record but for anybody who doesn't know or is new to the channel I have like three quarters three times as much storage on my phone which is what I use to record than I do on my iPad so when I transfer the video to edit uh, you know, there's no in-between option. It's either transfer it all or transfer none of it. So by the time I would get done transferring all the photos and video, I wouldn't have any room left to edit. So we're working on that. Also, this is a good time to let you guys know if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification button because there is at least one giveaway every month. One giveaway every month. We have a lot of fun on this channel, don't we, guys? All right, let's check on the other background now. Yeah, this Upo one is going to take longer to dry. Let me. I know you're not supposed to hit Upo with a heat gun, but I think from far away I'm going to hit it real quick, you guys. So you're not waiting forever listening to me ramble on. In the second part, you guys are going to see my mini haul, what I chose to get from a certain company, whether or not I chose to get the Hero Arts kit, some stuff I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Uh, we're going to talk about my upcoming trip to Delaware. Yes, I'm going to Delaware next weekend, a week from, well, a week from today, if you're watching this on Saturday morning. I got a list here, guys, so I wouldn't, I always, every time I do a video with you guys, I'm like, oh, I forgot to say this, oh, I forgot to say that. So I have a list here to make sure I told you guys everything tonight, because I've been thinking about this stuff all week when I was unable to record. And just hear my paper shaking, it's because I'm checking to make sure I told you guys everything I wanted to tell you. You know what I do want to get? I want to get those new, uh, nouveau spatulas, the rubber spatulas, like palette knives something sturdy to uh, put glimmer paste and stuff on my stencils. And I also want to get the, you know, the thermal web purple tape. I want to try the thin one. So far, I haven't been able to find it, though. All right, so let's give this a shot. Now, I'm not going to put it in the misty and do all that because it's just an experiment. So I'm just going to take a stamp, put it on a block, Excuse me, and we're going to try this. Alright. Trying to figure out what we're 
the best thing to use. I think we'll do it this way. This is just sitting here with my other piece in it, and I gotta grab a paper towel. Okay. So of course, back of the alcohol lift ink, if anybody has never used it or it's been a while. Should probably put the top back on it. it says, color non-porous surface with alcohol ink, let dry completely. That one's not dry yet, but this one is. Ink a rubber or clear stamp with lift ink and stamp directly over the alcohol ink. Immediately blot the stamped image and wipe with a soft dry cloth to reveal the lifted image. Stamp image onto a porous surface to transfer the lifted image. Clean stamp with an all-purpose cleaner. Okay. So let's go right in the center here where that dark ring is. The only problem about not using a Misty to do this is you can feel that sucker slide when you set it down because that alcohol ink is so slick and shiny. Okay, I heard that, that worked. Let me see if I got a scrap piece of cardstock here. Here we go. That worked. Okay. Blot. Rub. 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 It does work. And look at that impression. Let me clean this off real quick. Excuse my arm if you can see it. I forgot to bring my stamp cleaner forward. I'll make sure this is nice and clean from when we do the one with the Upo. Let it dry for a second. Okay, so here's the lifted image in the second generation and that was in waiting in between stamping them and I know this is just a scrap but I mean that turned out really good I think that is the best lifted image from using alcohol lifting that I've ever seen at least from my experience and then this one can you guys see it there I wish the camera picked it up better. Oh, there you go, you can see it there. I mean, maybe I didn't pick a very good stamp for this. Let's try. Let's try this outline. While well, we're still waiting for that U boat paper to dry. All right. Let's try it in the blue this time. There's that. Let me get to this before it dries. Oh, that one. That one's definitely better. You guys still can't, I mean, maybe it's just me because I can't see very high up above the camera, but right there, that's the leaf, or the set of leaves. Right, right there. 
Maybe I'm just picking the wrong type of stamp. There's the lifted image. Um, let me clear this off. Maybe try something that has more solid surface. And see if you guys can see it better that way. I better put this flower middle back before I forget it. I'm so tired, guys. It's like kind of right now. like four or five o'clock in the morning, and I can't even go to bed until I get both of these uploaded. All right, where do we want to go now? Partially in the blue, partially in the purple. Let's try that. There's the lifted image. That one turned out really good. I mean, they all turned out good for me. Not underneath the camera. I don't know how to get get it so you guys can see it better. All right, nothing else is coming up there. Now, if you watched that while I was doing it, you can definitely tell that it got lighter. There it is right there. That whole kind of acorn or bud of a flower shape. I think I picked the wrong kind of stamps to do this with. Here's the lifted image. So the first one was very outline-ish with not a lot of solid space at all. This one is mostly solid space. There was no kind of happy in between with these. So I probably should have picked a different stamp set, but it is showing us that we can use alcohol lift ink on the poster board. Because that's the poster board right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's wash that off and we're going to see if the u is dry. Slide this out of the way. <clears throat> okay. This is dry. That's a little tacky. That's dry right there. That's dry. All right, so there's enough spaces on here that are dry that we can try this. I do need a different scrap piece of paper though. Right, I got one. Okay, so first we're gonna try that acorn or flower bud looking one, the last one we used on the poster board. I'm gonna put it right here. All right, there's my lift. Let's put this quick. That really came out awesome. And I know you guys can see that without me lifting. So of course on the u bow it's definitely easier. Definitely easier. But, I mean, with the poster board, you're making those cards to give to people. You know, not in most cases, not to show them on camera as their main use. So I would say I'm still willing to use the poster board to do alcohol lifting cards, or at the very least, save my Yupo that costs $10 a pack for doing techniques like alcohol lifting. 
Let's just try the other outline flower in the leaf just to see what those look like. Here's the leaf. That's pretty. So stark white that's so beautiful and I'm gonna put this flower up in the corner because I want to use this <laughs> I'm gonna use this to make a card you're definitely gonna see this card in the next video because that's just gorgeous right there and here's the outline flower I'll just put it right here in the bottom When is spring going to be here, guys? You know, one day it's okay for me, and the next day it's freezing cold. I mean, I was all happy because it was 46, 45, 46 degrees the other day, and it went down to like 42, and I was able to wear a sweatshirt without totally freezing. I mean, that's pathetic. When you're happy, you can do your sweatshirt, whether it's 45 degrees. It just kills me, and I cannot wait because I know Delaware's near the beach and I'm going to visit the beach. I don't care if it's cold. I'm going to visit the beach. And there you have it guys. So I'll do a comparison here side by side. Think away. Excuse me, I need a drink. Okay, so here, here's the leaves on the poster board alcoholic background. This is the flower. I can see them a little bit clearer now. So flower, leaves. We're in the acorn looking flower bud. Okay, and here's the lift ink impressions. There's the flower bud, the leaf, and the flower. And then here's the Yupo, excellent lifts. There's the leaf branch, flower, and then the flower bud. And here's all the lift prints. So, I mean, I think you guys have enough information definitely a lot of information for mary and then what i gave you here with the alcohol lift ink to make some decisions about how you want to go forward with your alcohol inking for cards and backgrounds and everything else so spoiler the information for the giveaway is in video number two so why don't you head on over to that second video don't forget to like this video if you like what you saw. Hit that uh, notification button if you're a subscriber so you know about the, the giveaways. Once a month, guys, those videos for the giveaways are once a month. And there's sometimes there's two, right, guys? Or two winners. We just had two winners last month. And I guarantee you're going to like the prize. So head on over to that second video. And you guys have a safe, healthy weekend. And ignore my babbling. Like probably talking with my eyes closed right now, but for now I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.